Now that we've done the LRGB composition, we can compress the dynamic range of the color composition to optimize the contrast inside the galaxy. We'll do this with HDR Multiscale Transform, which we can find in the Favorites category. The most important setting in HDRMT is the number of layers. We're going to experiment with it now by creating five previews and applying a different number of layers to each one. We'll start with four layers. then five layers, six layers, seven layers, And finally, eight layers. With four layers, the result is very imbalanced toward the smaller scales. The same thing happens with five layers. We get the most balanced results with six, seven, and eight layers. Perhaps the one that enhances the spiral structure the best and gives the most balanced result in all the components of the galaxy is the one with seven layers. So, let's stick with seven layers. The next step is to see if we need a lightness mask. If we use a mask, HDRMT will only be applied to the lightest areas. Let's test this on the last preview. Here's the result with a lightness mask, and here it is without the lightness mask. The result is more aggressive without the lightness mask, but this galaxy has so little contrast that we can allow it in this case. Also, in this image, we don't have any ringing because we don't have any very bright stars in the background. So we're going to stick with seven layers and no lightness mask. The next step is to decide what color representation we want in the image. If we want to preserve the original hues, we need to enable either To Intensity or Preserve Hue. The advantage of To Intensity is that, as well as preserving the original hues, it increases the color saturation. But in images with a small dynamic range, the result can be too aggressive. In these cases, it's better to select Preserve Hue. The difference between the two is small, but we can see it more clearly if we increase the color saturation with Curves Transformation. We store the two previews, and now we enhance the saturation of the least saturated pixels. And we do the same with the other preview. Here it is without preserving the original hues, and here it is with the hues preserved. As you can see, if we don't preserve the hues, the ones in the center of the galaxy become cooler. So, what's the best approach with this image? Remember, we selected an SD spiral galaxy as the white reference specifically to neutralize the dominant blue color. If we don't preserve the original hues, HDRMT enhances the local hues, so it tends to eliminate the overall chromatic deviation. This means that the large central area with the warmer hues is neutralized, and that's exactly what we didn't want. 
it wouldn't make sense because we selected a white reference that enhanced the warm tones in the center, and now we're just undoing that effect with the dynamic range compression. Therefore, for this image, we're going to preserve the original hues. There's just one more small detail we need to think about. HDRMT always causes artifacts in the saturated stars. We can easily prevent this with a star mask. We can create this saturated star mask using the linear luminance image. This will be our star mask, and it will select the saturated stars only. Now we apply the star mask to the image and invert it. This means that we're only protecting the centers of the bright stars. Let's apply HDRMT with the mask to a new preview. This is the result without the mask, and here's the result with the mask. As you can see, there's no dark area in the center anymore, but the edges are still very sharp. This is because the mask has very hard edges. Let's smooth them out a little. To do this, we open Convolution and apply a convolution with a standard deviation of 4 pixels. Now, when we show the mask, we can see that the edges are softer. And when we apply HDRMT with this mask, the star looks perfect. This is the result without smoothing the mask, and this is without the mask. Now that we've got the correct settings, we can go to the main view and apply HDRMT. The next steps will be to adjust the overall image contrast and color saturation, and we'll do this in the next video. Thank mm -hmm. you.